So in our reading today, it's from St. Paul to the Philippians, we have the description of how the Lord empties himself for love of us. So his state was divine, yet he did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave and became as men are. And being as all men are, he was humbler yet even to accepting death, death on a cross. Uh, we read it uh, regularly enough in our uh, Vespers, in our evening prayer. It's a, a beautiful reading, a, a wonderful summary of the Lord stepping down from his throne in heaven to become not only one like us, but to become one like us and die. And not only then to become one like us and die, but then to leave, to, to remain with us, to leave himself with us, if you will, uh, in the Eucharist. Right? So it's, 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 a, it's an amazing summary of, uh, of what we believe. Okay, now what we believe is ordinarily called our faith, right? What, what, uh, uh, what we believe, like the summary of what we believe is called our faith. Now, when I was growing up, and even when I was uh, in seminary, I never remember actually coming across a definition of the word faith. Uh, because if someone had asked me what is faith, I would have said, well, it's what one believes, or, you know, Catholic faith is what Catholics believe. Jewish faith is what Jewish Jews believe. But then I came across a definition of faith, which I found really, really helpful. And it's, it's traditionally how faith is defined. Like again, we've kind of maybe moved away from uh, obje- looking at our faith objectively, so from the perspective of, 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 of reason, and have made faith very, very subjective. So then we tend not to like definitions for things anymore. Just everyone kind of feel their own way through it and just kind of make it up as you're going along. Uh, but o- often, you see, drawing from the wisdom of the saints, drawing from the teaching of the church, we save ourselves a whole lot of time because I'm only going to live 85 or 90 years. And considering the way I eat, maybe 80 years. Uh, all them takeaways and Chinese is uh, going to get a clogged artery at some stage. But um, yeah, so I, won't, I don't have a whole pile of time to work out 2,000 years of Christian tradition. I just I don't have time. So when we draw from the wisdom of the saints, when we study our faith, it's like we get a, a head start, or like on an escalator. We don't have to do all the work ourselves. We, we get carried by the, the hands of, 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 by the shoulders of giants, really. So faith, what is it? Faith is the ascent of the intellect and the will to God's self-revelation. Faith is the ascent of the intellect and the will to God's self-revelation. Now, there's a couple of points there. It's the ascent of the intellect and the will. Ascent. So, it's something that I'm called to rise above, right? Um, we can look at evidence and we can accumulate evidence and we can do study and we can look at Eucharistic miracles and we can do all this kind of stuff. But this will only bring us to the threshold of faith, right? You are like, here's faith and here, here's me, okay? Uh, with, with all the evidence that we can accumulate, it brings you to the edge, right? But faith is the ascent of the intellect. I have to go above, above what I can purely understand. I have to go beyond what I can, what I can touch and what I can weigh and what I can measure. So faith will never be the consequence of evidence. And that's why people would say, you know, if I could see a miracle, if I could do this or that, or I would believe. No, you wouldn't. No, you won't. Like, because no amount of evidence, evidence won't, won't cause faith. Faith always, even if you saw the miracle of the sun, for example, say you're in Fatima, right, 1917 there, and you have this incredible miracle of the sun, the sun's spinning around and it miraculously, miraculously dries up the ground so quickly they think they're going to die as the sun is, is careering towards them and then it goes back into its place and re- resumes its normal color. Now, even after seeing that, you could say, well, it was a miraculous solar phenomenon. No, you could say it was a, an unusual solar phenomenon. You could say um, it was caused by the devil. You could say it was caused by an angel. You could say it was caused by any god that you want. You know what I mean? Even, even seeing evidence of something miraculous doesn't necessarily bring you back to the Trinitarian God. Okay? So even, even after seeing miracles, it's not going to be enough to bring you back to, to, to the truth. There's still the ascent, we have to go beyond, we have to go above what we can merely touch or see. So the intellect, the ascent of the intellect and the will. Intellect, we're supposed to use our brains when it comes to faith. 
This idea that we just all make it up for ourselves is, is, is dangerous, it's catastrophic. It leads to all sorts of, of, of error. Okay, so we're supposed to actually look at our faith from the perspective of reason, right? Like, if, if, like, like looking at, at scripture, how scripture ties in with itself, how, how it backs itself up and proves itself, how the Lord then fulfills all the various prophecies. You know, looking at, at things with reason, we can see that Jesus is the fulfillment of the Old Testament. So uh, we can, you, you look at the, the early Christians, what they believed, you know, the study of, of the church fathers, patristics as it's called what they believed, what the early church believed and taught. So like those who were with the apostles or very shortly thereafter, how they understood things. You know, it's good to look at these things from the perspective of reason, reason. But then there's also the sense of the, of the intellect and the will. Okay, even again, after looking at all these things and studying all these things, and those who've studied theology might have had this experience that they have professors who are really, really smart, uh, knew lots of things, but the will, the will wasn't necessarily there to embrace a relationship with this God, right? So you might know lots about him, but faith, faith is more than just head knowledge. Faith is the ascent of the intellect and the will. And the last bit is really important. The ascent of the intellect and the will to God's self-revelation. It's not the ascent of the intellect and the will to how I understand God. That's not what it says. The ascent of the intellect and the will to God's self-revelation, how God reveals himself. So he reveals himself through sacred scripture and through tradition with the big T, the tradition of the church with the big T, not, not local traditions like uh, uh, local traditions. Uh, there are different things like uh, when I was in the Ivory Coast, like an off tree procession in, in mass, for example, you bring up all sorts of stuff. You bring up the water and the wine are two of the many, many things that are brought up during an after procession. It's a local tradition. It's not tradition of the big T, it's a local tradition. It's fine, more or less. Uh, it takes a lot longer, it takes 20 minutes. It would never work in Ireland. Um, uh, but so these are local traditions with a small T. Uh, but tradition with, with, with the large T is like, for example, how we celebrate mass, the order in which mass is celebrated, uh, the, how the readings are, are, are chosen and taken, all this kind of thing. Uh, the sacraments that we have, they're not necessarily listed in sacred scripture. Jesus says, here are the seven sacraments. You know, these, these are born from tradition. The lived tradition of the church in the early days, it preceded sacred scripture. So in what we now call the New Testament, they lived this, they preached this, they taught that before it was written down. Then from their preaching and their teaching, things were written down. So tradition preceded scripture. Okay, so it's important just to understand these things. So, faith then is the ascent of the intellect and the will to how God reveals himself. And when, you, when we hear it said that way, isn't that so much more solid and credible than faith is whatever you're having yourself? Faith is whatever you believe. Well, no, no it isn't, not, not in Catholic terms. In Catholic terms, we're asked to, to, to look at the evidence, look at what God says about himself. And then not turn off our brain. Do not turn off your brain. Keep our intellect turned on, but at the same time, ascend, ascend, and say, Lord, I will not understand everything because I, I'm, my life is too short. I'm not particularly smart enough. Uh, there are people far smarter than me, but I can understand what I need to, that you are a God of love, that you are a God that empties yourself for us, that you are a God that carries us. That you are a God that wants us to be in heaven with you for all eternity. That's enough. So as we look at today's reading, we want to respond to it with faith. That our intellect and our will ascend to how God reveals himself to us. His state was divine. Yet he did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave and became as men are. And being as all men are, he was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on earth, and in the underworld should bend the knee at the name of Jesus, and that every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord 
to the glory of God the Father. Amen.